right. Do spawn. How do you project him special teams wise? Is he a returner? What would we look at him as? I think we'll see how he does, but I really project him as far as a role. There's a vision for him would be, you know, getting some punt return work in, some kick return work in. Mm -hmm. I think there's a place for him in punt protection, whether it's PP or a wing. And then, you know, like everybody, let's see what they can do on kickoff. Right. I think there's a spot for everybody, you know, tall, smaller, bigger, leaner. Mm -hmm. There's a spot for everybody and a role for everybody. And it's my job to find that for them, and it's their job to produce. Thank you. A lot of guys in the draft, they play special teams in college. How much did that factor into you saying, oh, yeah, I can check off on this guy. I can use him. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good question. But a lot of times guys do a ton in college, and they come into the pros, and they could be good at it, and they, they might not. A lot of guys don't do it in college. And a lot of them come into the pros and they can do it. So I think it's, it's, a, it's mindset, you know, for NFL special teams. And a lot of guys come to me that, because I haven't done this for three years, and ah, I'm kind of worried. And I say, Don't worry about it. Just because you haven't done it doesn't mean you can't. And I think that's a big, great challenge. One of my funnest challenges is finding roles for rookies on special teams, whether or not they've done it. And I think we've used a lot of rookies over the years, and they've done a pretty damn good job. So looking forward to this group. Yeah, that's that's huge. I think that shows great awareness by him. Really, you know, a rookie coming in, they should all think I'm going to just earn my stripes on special teams to get dressed and have a role for myself in the NFL. And then, like we've talked about before, then you kind of graduate to the next step, which maybe be starting at linebacker, starting a wide receiver. But he is one guy that had some outstanding special teams tape in college, and I would bet, I'd bet that that's going to transfer over to being a you know, legitimate NFL special teams guy right away. That's my goal for him. But um, just a couple of days we spent with him, you know, he's very aware. He's very alert in meetings. You can tell he's got some just ball in him, just doing some new things out there. So I'm definitely excited about him to compete with the other guys we have here. It showed the roster is still being put together. What do you stand at kicker? If the roster is still being put it's together? Still, still, still being oh, put yeah, together, yeah. What do you stand yeah. at kicker right now? Well, we got Tristan on the roster, and I think um, anybody else – on earth who's not on the team right now <laughs> is under consideration. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's everybody, really. I mean, you guys that are legitimate, but, you know, we don't want to just bring in a camp leg to kind of get through camp and save somebody. Anybody we come in here has got to compete with Tristan, and we feel has to be a legitimate uh, possibility of being a starting kicker in the NFL, and that could be a lot of different guys that we're still looking at, XFL, USFL, veterans on the street, younger guys that still haven't found a way. So, um, is it easier to get a veteran? Because last year you had young guys and they didn't work out. They yep. had to go to a vet. So yep. starting going forward, would you say this is good with a vet over what you did last yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, that's probably the easy way to say because you know more what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's a good one. <laughs> Can't reveal all our secrets. <laughs> Not that we have many right now. You never know what you're going to get, though, with a kicker. I mean, you kind of saw it last year in the playoffs. Do you ever really know what you're going to get, even though you got to get a veteran or a rookie? Or... I think so, yeah. I think – sorry, I just got done working out, so I'm still catching my breath. <laughs> I think with the rookie, maybe there's a little bit more. I'm not really sure what we're going to get. But with the veteran, I think you kind of know what you're going to get. And if you're going to bring them in, you got to be excited about what it is. that You know, there's veterans on the street right now that – you know, let's face it, there's Mason, there's Robbie, there's Suckup, there's a lot of guys that have performed at a good level in the NFL, and you weigh that against everything else. <laughs> you know, so um, I, there's really no secrets of who's available. And um, it's, I think the good thing for us at the kicker spot is just being patient and deciding, you know, who that second guy is we're going to bring in, whether it's now or to training camp to compete against Tristan. And that might not be the end of it either, like we saw last year. The two guys we had in OTAs and training camp <laughs> weren't the guys. So yeah. I think it's an all ongoing process that we've got to make a decision before week one. Tristan is here for a reason. There are traits there that you like. Why, yep. is, why is he here as part of that competition? To well, we brought him in you know, before the last playoff game. And he's a guy that has been on a lot of teams and really just hasn't had an opportunity to really compete like I think he does this year. You know, He's always been behind the Nick Folk or the Justin Tucker and where he, he's kind of more camp way, but he's a quality kicker. So I think this is, and he knows it, his best opportunity 
to be the guy that probably he's had in his career. But he's got, you know, he's got a young leg. He's a strong guy. Um, he's shown flashes of accuracy, great trajectory, all the things you want in a pro kicker. And I think it's, for him, it's showing consistency and then being given an opportunity that I think this is the best one he's probably ever had. Yeah, Noah Brown and, um, and Luke Gifford yep. are no longer here. Does it kind of give you an opportunity for some of these uh, young guys? you got some, some guys that you're expecting to take that leap this year? Yeah, the, and we've talked about that with our vets and with our rookies the last couple of days is, you know, Noah was a fantastic special teams guy for us. Gifford was one of the best, I think, in the league. Great special teams guy for us. And we're the first one to congratulate him on a new opportunity. But the door opens for, for somebody else to step in and fill that, whether it's, you know, Harper, Cox, Damone, Overshawn, you know, T. Wheat, uh, Isaiah Land, any of the guys we have in here. Um, and then at receiver, you know, there's, I think that's going to be an awesome competition for Noah's kind of role. You know, that fourth receiver, special teams guy, whether it's Tolbert or Houston or Drum or Durden or Cropper, any of the guys we have, you know, they know that it's open competition and there's not room for everybody, you know, but not that we don't put pressure on it, but we just say, hey, this competition and, you know, help your teammate out, challenge them, you know, you make each other better. And uh, it'll be some really cool battles where I think our team has a lot of spots that are, He's going to be the starter. He's going to be the starter. He's going to be the starter. But there's a few on special teams where it's it's wide open. So training camp should be pretty wild in a good ended, way. The way it ended, was it hard to bring Brett back for this year, or is that still on the table? Yeah, I think everything's on the table. Okay. You know, I, let's face it. You look at Brett. He had a great year, and he had you know a bad game, and you know he had missed a kick before it, missed one kick after it, but he had a bad game. But you know he played 20 of them. 22. I can't remember what it was, 17 plus three, 17, plus two, 22 20. games, you know, and he had a, a bad game and a half. And so, actually, he was 92% kicker and, you know, missed a couple of PATs at the end. Did a great job on kickoff. So, um, I think everybody's on the table. And I'm proud of Brett, what he did last year. And, you know, if he gets a spot, a shot here or somewhere else, I'm sure he'll perform well. Coach, to the point of um, losing Luke Gifford this past year, one thing that he did very well is blocking punts. Do you appoint another person to do that? Or is this something that you maybe see in a player and you say, yeah, that's, that's a really good question because pump blocking isn't for everybody. You know, you, you, can, you can drill it for everybody, but not everybody can block a punt. There's very few that can. So we try to identify those guys that have some natural pass rush ability. It doesn't have to be an actual pass rusher. You know, it could be a linebacker. Sometimes we've had receivers that do it. So it's, a, it's an identified thing as we go through training camp. And then when you kind of design some rushes, you, you have a feeling as a coach, like, okay, I think this is where – this might hit and this could be the guy that does it. And you just put the one or two or maybe three guys there who you think could block a punt because not everybody can do it because it's actually very hard to do as far as when you get there with my eyes, with my hands, the angle on the punter. And so um, Giff was really good at it, good. you know, and it's hard to find guys that can do that. Dorrance Armstrong is outstanding at it. Same. Yep. So um, I'm excited about finding another guy or two that can do it. Sam Williams can do it. I mean, we, we got some bodies. So that's the thing. That's a, that's a thing for you. Yeah, we got to do it. We'll I'm trying to set a record. If, if Overshawn uh, can be this year what you believe he is, what's the plan in terms of how he can help irrigate it? Yeah, I mean, based off his college tape, I, I feel like I can put him anywhere on kickoff, and he'll run down and make some plays and cause some hell in the back end. I think on the kickoff return, you put him on the front line, like at a Gifford spot, you know, and single him up on one of their best guys. I think he'll be outstanding on punt in protection and cover because he did that in college, um, and he'll be – outstanding somewhere on punt return. And that's just based off of his college tape where he did a lot of stuff. Even when he was, you know, it's, it's really cool. Some guys, they're starting on offense or defense. They know it's their draftable year. And when they're still contributing in a large way on special teams in college, oh man, that's when you know, like you got somebody that when they get here, they know what they got to do to earn a spot on the team and perform at a high level. And he'll be one of those guys competing against, you know, Malik Jefferson, another Texas kid from a couple years ago. So. Bring them all on. <laughs> There's a role for everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.